Hey, Sun here. I'm a privacy and security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In today's episode, I wanna talk about this little USB flash drive, which has a few features that are quite novel and very interesting in the context of sensitive use cases, such as running Superbact. If you haven't followed this channel for some time, Superbact is a special app that allows you to create encrypted paper backups uh, in the form of encrypted QR codes. Now, obviously, if you're backing up something really sensitive, maybe a mnemonic uh, in the context of cryptocurrencies, you wanna make sure you do it on an air gap computer such as this one, but you also wanna make sure that whatever you do on the application, when you print it out using cups on Linux or Mac OS, you wanna make sure that those files are not persisted to the hard drive. There is a whole episode about how when you print on Mac OS, these files are actually written to the file system. I'll link to it down there in the description. But the idea is for sensitive use cases, you wanna be able to run an operating system that is amnesic, and you want to be absolutely sure in a way similar to Tails OS that whatever happens does not persist to the hard drive. Now, Superbacked OS is a version of Ubuntu that's been uh, configured in a way where it is amnesic by design. If you go on the Superback website and you download the Superback OS releases, essentially, if you look at the documentation, it tells you how to set it up and how to flash it to a USB flash drive or maybe an external SSD. And really this device is the one that we recommend now for all kinds of reasons. So the Kangaroo Flash Trust device, and this episode is not sponsored by the way, um, has two very interesting features that I absolutely love in the context of sensitive computing. Number one, it has a cryptographically signed firmware that is verified each time you use the device. So if you had some kind of a supply chain attack, it would be very unlikely that a rogue firmware could be deployed to this stick to be able to circumvent uh, the sensitive kind of computing that we're talking about in the context of Superback. So if you buy this on Amazon and we can trust Kangaroo, and this is a hypothetical, I don't know them personally, but let's, let's assume that their integrity is good. Well, it would be very difficult to kind of man in the middle that transaction and kind of corrupt the supply chain. Um, that's really useful in the context of making sure that this device can be trusted by the computer. But the feature that I absolutely, absolutely love is this feature right here. I don't know if the camera will focus. This here has a physical switch that sets this device as read only. And that means that even though a lot of care is put into developing Superback to OS and making it amnesic, in the context of Superback, we always like to have fail safes to fail safes. And if it's possible, another level. So fail safes to fail safes to fail safes. In the context of Superback to OS, it is designed to never persist data on the hard drive. And by the way, we've just released another guide, which I'll link down there in the description that explains how to verify that data persistence is in fact disabled. And this is what we do as part of the provisioning of Superback OS when we create those images that you can flash on USB flash drives. We absolutely wanna make sure that we haven't made a mistake in the context of making it amnesic uh, or non-persistent. So this here is how we do it. But again, something could happen. Some exploit could perhaps get us out of the overlay uh, route. Uh, and at that moment in time, that's when having a device that actually has a physical switch that tells its firmware to establish this device as read-only, that means that it's really impossible to actually persist data on it. And if you have a look at the guides on how to run Superback to OS uh, on Intel computers or Raspberry Pis, one of the steps here in the recommendations is to physically remove internal disks and wireless interfaces if not soldered to the motherboard. Um, but also in the BIOS of computers such as this one here, by the way, this is the one that I use. It's a ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 10. Um, this one here has no internal uh, hard drive. It's been literally removed. Um, and I have disabled all wireless interfaces from the BIOS. So from Ubuntu's perspective, there really is no networking interface. So unless I physically plug in an ethernet cable, it cannot communicate to the internet and it cannot persist data because there is no internal hard drive. And when using the Kangaroo uh, flash trust device, it is impossible for it to write data to this device, which means that when you create 
encrypted paper backups, and maybe you're creating what we call a distributed backup, which means you need two of three of these plus a passphrase to access the underlying secret. Well, you can be absolutely sure that there is no, like not even a single byte changed on this specific device. Now, obviously you wanna use a printer that is uh, like not smart. <laughs> what I mean by there is, uh, you may notice right here, there's a printer. Um, that's a brother printer. We have it in the recommended hardware. If you look on the website in the FAQ, uh, you'll see if you type hardware, uh, what hardware and operating system does Superback run on. Um, actually, that's not, I think, where I say this. Oh yeah, hardware recommendations. Uh, so in there, actually, where is this? Oh yeah, here, what printer? Sorry about that. Um, so it's a brother. Now there is a new version of this, which is totally fine, but essentially I absolutely love kind of old school laser printers that don't have any fax or photocopy or function built into them, uh, no scanner. What that means is usually they don't have memory. So if you power them off, uh, whatever data was on them while printing uh, is forever lost. And again, as I said on Mac OS in the context of cups, which is uh, the printer daemon that works on Mac OS and Linux, Anytime you print something on your computer, it actually saves the file on the computer itself and then it transmits it uh, over USB or over the network to the actual printer. And some printers will actually save this on a printer so you can like reprint or stuff like this. So again, you wanna make sure you choose the right printer. And um, there's actually like, there are very interesting caveats. Uh, I was doing research on using Canon Selfie, uh, if that's what they're called, uh, printers. Uh, like kind of like, um, I don't remember what the name of them are, but anyways, it uses cartridges, which when you print become negatives of what you've printed. So I'll create a whole episode on this. Uh, it's a good time to say you should always like those episodes and subscribe and hit that bell if you want to help out. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for you today. This is kind of like a really, I guess, surface deep dive into why this device is, is pretty novel. There are alternatives. Um, I really like those little carrier boards. I talked about them in last episode. Um, and when used in conjunction with an Opal NVMe disc, it's possible to set the disc itself as read only. And this here has a physical switch as well. So when I say we like to have fail safes to fail safes to fail safes, well, this is definitely a little overkill, but you have super backed OS, which is read only, you know, non-persistent. Uh, that can run on an NVMe disk set to read only. And I'll have an episode coming your way shortly on how to do this. It's pretty sick. On a board with a read only switch. Three levels, that's the amount of care that we put into this stuff. So anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.